Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Jeremiah's J-Man, Monero J-Man Seminars, Millennial Who Talks, episode number 18. We're here with Judy Gabler from the Greater Capital District Region of New York. And, you know, Millennial Who Talks, we are changing lives with real stories from real estate rock stars all across the country. Today, we're honored to have as our guest, Judy, who is the NAR 30 Under 30 woo, Award winner in 2016. Let's get right into it. Judy, tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and how you got started in real estate and so successful in such a short period of time. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks again for having me, Jay, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for, for taking time out of your, thanks for taking time out of your super busy <laughs> schedule. So uh, my name's Judy Gabler. Uh, my license name is Judith, just so I'm Department of State regulated right now. <laughs> um, and uh uh, I got started in the business uh, because right out of school, I actually worked for a management and development company called uh, Alchester Group. And part of my job there was to have my real estate license because we managed uh, independent living facilities in the capital region. And um, I didn't do much with that license the first couple of years. I did have really great training because the company I worked for was a title company and a law firm. So I kind of had that background more than the real estate sales side. Um, and I actually decided to go full-time real estate after two years with them and ended up with a big company here in the capital region. Uh, and I really loved my time there. And I had a great manager and a mentor that I worked with, and uh, they both helped me to escalate my business. I doubled it every year for three years. And uh, the fourth year, I started a team. And then the fifth year, which is this year, I decided to open my own company, which was always something I was planning on doing. And um, so today's a big day, actually. I have my first uh, office meeting of the year, and I have my new building that has been rehabbed for the past three months. That's getting completed today. So there is a lot going on this morning. <laughs> Well, again, thank you for taking time out of your schedule. Um, so, start. How old were you when you started? Uh, so full time when you not when you got licensed, but when you actually started full time. Full time, I must have been twenty three, twenty four. Twenty three, twenty four. Mm -hmm. So you, you say you had a good mentor, good you know, good management, and that. What were some of the keys in that first year to really ramp up your business? Because it's it's pretty much unheard of to double your business year over year. And it, uh, what's your secret? That's what everybody wants to know. What's the secret sauce? <laughs> I and, get asked uh, that a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, that, I mean, that's the whole purpose of the show, right? Uh, so I honestly have to say it's just persistence. Um, I have a tendency to overwork myself. I'm a workaholic. I love to work. I wanted, I've worked. I've been an entrepreneur since I was 11. I was babysitting, I was serving ice cream, house cleaning, walking dogs, anything you could think of, uh, helping to cater parties. I was a hostess and a waitress, um, and I house cleaned my way through college. Uh, anything I could do, I just loved working and making money. Happy. Um, and when I first started, my uh, manager actually mentioned that I should do open houses and maybe a first time home buyer seminar. So for the first couple of years, those open house leads and um, definitely did the first time homebuyer seminars, which were awesome too. And I really, my bread and butter was, were first time homebuyers. And after they become uh, your clients and they experience uh, the top of the line customer service that you provide, and they really appreciate you as a real estate agent. They give you referrals, and I'm happy to say that we last year we had 90% referrals for our, our business. Wow, and that's so, your fifth year in the business, right? Um, that's you said, I or fourth think, year. Well, fourth. I'm 30 now, so <laughs> uh, full time. That's seven years. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow, but that's still pretty good. 90% referrals with that length of time in the business. I like what you said about top level customer service was one of your keys, but then also hard work because so many people think, oh, she, there's something. That's what she's got so much business because she's connected somewhere. But really, like what you're saying, and for those who don't know you, she's 
she's pretty intense. Okay. I've had her in my <laughs> classes. If you're looking at, at, at the disc profile, she's like a high D I would imagine like very results oriented. And I could imagine like, it's hard for you to stop working. Right. Um, but I, I want, if you're watching this and you're a new agent, just know that like it, she works hard at what she does. And that's one of the reasons that she has been able to increase her. It's not just you get your license and then your phone started ringing off the hook, right? No, absolutely not. It took a lot of work. <laughs> I actually started us- the first six months um, was uh, probably the hardest. And it was tough for me because I had gone full time. I left my salary job. And um, it was really difficult not to have a paycheck. And we're very worried about if you're going to make enough money to stay afloat that month. And uh, so I, I took another job for a week. <laughs> and while I was in that job, I couldn't answer my phone from nine to five, but it kept ringing with referrals. And nice. it was almost like from above saying, Judy, you're doing the wrong thing. You belong in this business. What are you doing? Just hold out. And if I guess if I could have any advice for anyone just starting, you really got to just stick with it for at least two years and make sure that it's definitely not the route for you because it does take time to get established and to really feel comfortable in the business. Um, but I left that job. I apologize for leaving after just a week and uh, I brought them like pastries and coffee and just, you know, just it said, I'm really sorry, but I have to follow my dream and I realized this is what it is. So uh, from there I just took off and it's been great, but definitely have to stick with it. So I guess you could say real estate was calling. Oh yeah. <laughs> sure. My corny joke. I just want to throw that in there. I liked it. <laughs> let's, let's talk. And uh, Brendan Kaiser says, you amaze me, Judy. So proud of you and all your success, Aww. all the best. So you, do you know Brendan? I do. I went to college with uh, Brendan. And uh, he and I were in a group of peers together. Uh, and it was really um, great knowing him and staying connected with him. He's also nice. an inspiration to me. Oh, that's great. So let's talk a little bit. You, you, you said first time homebuyer seminars and then open houses. I know... That's almost where everybody starts as a new agent. Like, okay, you got to do open houses. You got to contact agents in your office that have listings, do their open houses. What were your strategies for success there? Because if you don't love them, you're not going to stick with it. And if you don't love them, it may be because you're doing it wrong, right? So what, what was your strategies? Like, how did you approach it? What was your setup beforehand? What did you say or do during the open house? What, what did you do afterwards? That kind of stuff. Um, the ideal open house uh, for really good prospecting is to get there early and to set up with a sign-in sheet. Or there actually are some open house apps, um, and you can have the people sign in. Ultimately, you want to sell the house that you're representing, and that is our main goal while we're there. But if we're not going to sell it to them because they just don't like the house and it's not the right fit, then um, obviously we want to continue to work with them. Uh, Because we do spend a lot of time, and in this business, time is money. And so it's really important to really know that house very well. So if you're not working um, on that listing yourself, you should talk with the agent, maybe even go take notes. You want to know that house like the back of your hand, because buyers that come through the door are going to have a lot of questions. They might be kind of odd questions that... um, you know, put yourself in the mind of a buyer and write down the answers because they're going to want to know that you're well versed in that property. And so is the seller of that house. And uh, that's really, really important so that you can really represent that home well, because ultimately, sometimes I have um, I have people that come in and almost interview me. I think oh, that yeah. they're a buyer coming to the open house, but they're really that's interviewing smart. me to list the house. And I get a call a couple of days later saying, we really loved uh, meeting you. You really represented the house well. Can you come over and look at our property? We're interested in buying. So it's not always for people that come in and, and look, they are sometimes coming to interview you and you just don't know. And you have to treat them all the same and uh, give them the information and really represent yourself and the house in its best light. Yeah, so I would say if you're if you're a new agent watching this again, Judy brings up a great point that know the house inside and out, because if somebody walks into an open 
and they're asking you questions and you're like, oh, I'm not sure. Let me check. Oh, I'm not sure. Let me check. Oh, I'm not sure. Let me check. You've lost that potential client for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, let alone you're not representing the house to the best of your ability. So it's important if you're, if you're the listing agent or if you're there and you're representing somebody from the office, you're still a sub agent of the seller. So you still should be representing it in its best light. I mean, in laws differ depending on where you're watching this and what state, but so let's talk about first time home buyer seminars then, because those that's an avenue. I think you're probably really successful at it because not a lot of people do it. Right. What was your approach? How did you market it? Uh, where did you hold it? Was there sponsors? Was there affiliates in with you? Talk a little mm -hmm. bit about that. OK, first of all, I want to say hi to Suzanne. I saw your comment. Thank you so much. You're very sweet. I loved working with you guys and your house is gorgeous. Um, anyways, I uh, first time home buyer seminars. Those um, were really awesome. And we didn't always get like, a huge turnout, but we had between three to 10 couples or single people come to be t at those. So what we did is we put together a packet of information that had a step-by-step -step buying guide, it had information on appraisals, um, on the typical mortgages that you can get. And then we asked a mortgage officer, uh, an attorney uh, to sit on the panel with us. The attorney usually would buy like a gift card to raffle off to the attendees. And then um, the mortgage officer would pay for the food at the event. And then we would just handle all the advertising for it. Um, and there are places like bagel shops or on um, any little restaurants that sometimes if you just buy some food for the event, uh, they'll give it to you for free. And also a lot of banks have really nice rooms for education. Um, so that would also be an option. Um, and then we advertise it at least a month out. Uh, like we're actually having one in February and, um, We've been advertising that already. Well, we're going to start kicking it off very soon here. Uh, but um, and we just make sure people can uh, check in through Eventbrite and register and we follow up and make sure that they're still attending. And it's a really great thing because they, they learn so much from you and instantly build that relationship. So when you say advertise, how are you advertising it? Is it is it Facebook ads? Are you doing the paper? Are you doing like word of mouth postcards, all the above? What? Um, we do Facebook advertising, uh, boosted posts on our Gabor Realty page. Uh, we do all the event sites. And so like the local newspapers, local news channels, albanyevents.com, things like that. Um, and, and at this time, we are going to be looking into doing a spotlight ad just to track if that works um, and see how it goes. But I, I know a lot of our uh, customers actually have friends that are looking at buying and, and be educated uh, that way if it's now or in the future, at least they'll know what to do and how to, how to handle. It helps everyone, whether they work with us or not, it's good education for everybody in industry uh, so that people know how. So for new agents who may be watching again, I know it seems scary to do a seminar like Every, it's the number one fear is public speaking above death. People would rather die than, than speak in public. And I think uh, Judy's approach, if you do a print of uh, the panel style where you have like an attorney, you have, you know, you have people up there with you, it will ease some of that fear. So the spotlight isn't totally on you. And then also you could share in the investment. Um, really great strategies for success there. And if you do one and only three or four people show up, who cares? It's three or four right. people that are there to learn from you. And if you want to be a resource, it's all about, you know, showing them your expertise. You know, today's consumer, it's not, we're not selling to them, right? Judy, would you agree? It's, it, you're providing. It's a that's service. One of your, it's all service. Yeah, it's a service, right? When they see that you're, you know what you're talking about, then they're more likely to work with you rather than who cares about what you sold and, and that. I mean, that's important, but it's more more so that they know that you're an expert in the industry. Right. And it's important that they feel totally comfortable. I'm sorry. Just a second. My dog is chewing her toy. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. So anybody who may be watching who has this questions. This is Lucy. Oh, <laughs> uh, Lucy. So is, is she, what kind of dog? 
a golden doodle. <laughs> golden doodle. I knew it was something doodle. Yeah. For sure. And it was in the same language. It's just cute. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no problem. I have to be here and not the office because there's carpet being put down right now. And it's loud. So what's your follow-up like after the seminar? Is it just, do you kind of touch base and just, are you the resource for them as you're guiding them through the process? Cause not everybody's going to want to leave there and buy a house. It could be a year out, two years out. They're just there for the information. What's your follow-up like? Like how do you stay in touch? Um, so we follow up and make sure that we answered all their questions at the seminar because after people hear and learn so much, it's a hard thing to digest all the information and uh, so we just like to follow up and make sure that they're happy um, and they have all their answers. And then uh, we just stay in touch with them. We actually use a program uh, for contact management and it helps remind us of who needs to uh, be in, put in touch with us just to make sure that they know that uh, we're there and we're willing to help. So what, what's the program? Uh, follow up boss. Okay. Put this on here. Follow up. Expensive. Uh, follow up is expensive, but for individual agents, I got started with Realty Juggler. It's like I think at the time it was ninety nine dollars a year. Yeah, and it still is. It's probably one of the most affordable CRMs out there. It's pretty robust too. And then I think if you refer somebody, don't you get three months free or something like that? So I know agents yeah. who have it for free because they refer. You know, everybody's always asking what's a good CRM. So Realty Juggler to start with. And then uh, if you want to go to the next level or need more follow-up boss is a good option, but a little bit more. It's of better for teams or offices. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So tell us at what point did you decide, or that was always your intention to open your own brokerage, right? Uh, after a few years, I realized that that I really loved to train and teach um, agents who were newer in the business um, and make sure that they knew what the keys to success were and that they could thrive and grow too because I had a lot of help from people and um, I want to give it back. And so I decided that I wanted to open my own company so that we could all work together and ultimately sell real estate, give the best customer service, but also have the support of each other. And um, it's just, it's worked out really well. And so if I'm an agent and I'm thinking about building a team before I open my own office, let's say I don't want to build, open my own, because you built the team first and then you did the office. Well, right. Who were some of the key people within your team that you saw, you know, were complimenting you and helping you get to the next mm -hmm. level? Okay. Yourself, like, what were the steps for you? So when I first started, um, I, I do not like to drop balls and it's not, it's just not the way I do business, but I got to the yeah. point where I'd sold 70 houses by myself. I way through the year. Um, I had no help at all. Not even an agent to run and show houses for me. I was so burnt out my very new marriage. Um, I've been married for five years now. It was really tough to stay in touch with my husband because I was working all the time and I wanted to work all the time. Like you said before, it was hard to turn off uh, with the personality that I have. Coach, I use uh, James Hotelling actually. And he said, Judy, you got to get an assistant. Um, so I actually hired Rebecca Cavalieri, who was a real estate agent with a different company at the time. And I asked her to help me with paperwork, you know, book showings and help write up offers and things like that. And uh, I accidentally had double booked myself for showings one night. And I, I need you to show a few houses for me. I had been working with those buyers for six months. And it just so happened that perfect house had come on that day because the next day she came in and put a contract in front of me and said, they're all set. <laughs> so I said, great. And I, I, I had her work with some more buyers that I had. Everybody loved her so much. They all stay stay. She sold nine houses the first month she was with me. Um, Holy cow. So I quickly converted her to a buyer's agent with me. And now she does listings a lot too. Uh, and she's awesome at what she does. She's a true hustler. Um, and she genuinely cares about her customers just like I do, uh, which is a, a huge.
differentiate from. Um, and uh, we had to hire an assistant again. So uh, we actually put um, advertisements on Indeed and Facebook and uh, we had people apply and I rifled through a hundred resumes and uh, did a personality test, the Tony Robbins personality test on the top applicants. And if I was happy with the results of that test, I asked everybody to send me a minute long um, video just shot on their phone wow. about why they're a good fit for the company. I had people go and stand like right on the side of the road in front of the real USA sign and shoot a video um, and send it to me. I could barely hear them, <laughs> but I gave them an A for effort. I had someone send it to me like upside down because they just didn't know how to see alerted me that they're not good with technology, which does not fly with us. Um, and so they were booted and uh, just some really interesting ones. And then um, Lauren, who was my first assistant, she was uh, she was just right on. And Rebecca was standing right behind me. And we both looked at each other and said, that's her. The next day, she uh, the best first assistant I could ask for. And then uh, she stayed with us for two years while she was finishing grad school. And then I ended up hiring a full time assistant and took on four other agents. Um, I uh, assigned a transaction coordinator to my transactions, which has helped tremendously with customer service. And um, it kind of just took off to the point where it was ready for us to transition into the company. So was it hard for you to let go of control? Because I think that's a lot of issue, not issue. Oh, yeah. Cha cha challenges that a lot of agents have like, no, 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 I can't have somebody else do that. I, I need to do that and make sure that it's 100% correct. So how, how were you able to like, I know that it must have been hard for you because I know you, but, you know, like, how were you able to let go? of control and, and start delegating all these, you know, tasks that need to be delegated that aren't income producing that you shouldn't be focused on. Um, I had to force, I was forced into it. Um, like I said, I was to the point of like total breaking point. And um, I've done a lot of seminars before when I won the 30 under 30 uh, Southern tier and all that good stuff. And mm -hmm. every, everybody I'd said is don't get to that point. You're going to become really successful. If you have the drive in this business, there is business out there for you and you're going to do really well, but don't burn yourself out because that's just a total disservice. And I almost did it multiple times. Um, and uh, I think it's really important to make sure that you do get that help after you hit 30 units sold. Uh, that's, I think, the breaking point is getting beyond that. And honestly, I know people are worried about losing money, but it's going to only help you feel more balanced and be able to do more business and to make your customers even happier so that you continue to get the referrals that you uh, ultimately have driving your business. So I love what you did in hiring the assistant. And I, this is the first time I ever heard of it. I want to mention it again so people hear it. Personality tests, number one, right? Because so that you make sure that the person's the right fit for an assistant position because certain personalities do better in that position. But then also the video. I, I mean, obviously I love video <laughs> and I just love that you, you did that as like, just do a one minute video. And if they couldn't or didn't know how, like that wasn't a good fit for you. Now, where did you, where did that come from? Just your head and just kind of just said, I think this is what we're going to do. No, I wish. Uh, I have a lot of people who I reach out to for mentorship. Uh, it's really important to surround yourself with other successful people or, uh, you know, those who have uh, outlooks in very different ways than you do. Um, but my coach actually gave me that advice to do the video and it was spot on. And then also you mentioned, you know, like if they, if they're not in line with the core values that you're building this business on, then they're not a good fit for you either. Like if they weren't, you know, if, if service wasn't top notch, if, if they didn't really care about the customer, like those are people that you weren't even, it's not hiring somebody just to get the workload off your table. It's you're trying to build a business, right? Right, right. Um, the other thing is there are people who have teams. Um, I, at one point I felt it was a really strong need for me to get a marketing director because I um, am huge on branding and making sure that we're consistent across the board. Uh, so I actually hired uh, Jessica, who's my marketing director, and she's extremely talented, um, graphic designer, um, just really type A like me, and it's perfect. Um, 
I, so it was really, it was really great to have her. And actually we're looking to hire a second graphic designer just to take on the listing side of things to make sure that we are able to produce things where um, because we are getting really busy. Um, the market's already picked up and it's not even at the end of the first week. In well, let's, uh, <clears throat> I guess that brings us back to how you maintain the balance. Now, are you just focused on managing the business itself and then just buyers and sellers every day or just sellers? How do you, how do you, maintain the balance now that you have all these intricate pieces in place, pieces to the puzzle. I know once your office is complete, that'll be, you know, a huge weight off your shoulders, but how do you, how do you keep the balance? Um, so once the office is complete, oh my gosh, it'll be amazing. <laughs> um, I'm really happy that it is do it's ending now because uh, we'll be uh, totally moved in and settled by February 15th when we're having our open house. And um, work every day. Um, I definitely help manage my agents, make sure they're doing their job the best way that they can, and that customer service is always top notch. Um, also, relationships with other realtors are really important to me and to my agents. Um, it's something we focus on every team meeting, um, making sure that we all stay connected and all help each other out regardless of what firm we're in because we're colleagues and ultimately we have to do business together at some point over the next 25, 30 years. Um, so um, to stay balanced, uh, I just have a really amazing team of agents. Uh, we all help each other out and they're all really willing to help, especially if we're a little frazzled. Um, because we know that that's really important for our health and to stay to that we're not burning out, uh, because it really can end your business really abruptly <laughs> when you feel that way. Um, also, uh, scheduling, I block, um, out time for date nights to my husband, for friends and family. Um, I treat them just like an appointment. Um, and it's really critical. Uh, I've also have been doing... The Miracle Morning. I don't know if anybody's read it, um, but I love it. And we'll see how long I'm in the 30 day challenge right now. Um, and basically, I get up an hour earlier than I usually do, uh, do silence, meditation or prayer, um, reading for 10 minutes, um, exercising. Uh, but basically, uh, oh, affirmations I found have been really helpful, too. So like affirming what you want to happen. Um like, I want a more balanced life. I'm going to have a more balanced life. I have a more balanced life. Saying those things all the time will help you eventually get there because you uh, and envisioning your goals and envisioning how it's going to feel to reach those goals feels amazing every morning. And you just feel more balanced through the day. When it's a stressful day, you, you feel less stressed, which is kind of, but it's true. Um, but basically just taking that time in the morning to get yourself centered before it gets crazy, because it, it gets crazy every single day. Um, it's really been super helpful in making me a happier person <laughs> and better to deal with. <laughs> Do you know who the author is of The Miracle Morning? just want to put it up I, here on the screen. Um, I Yes, it's Hal Elrod, I think, Miracle. Hal, H-A-L? Yep, H-A-L-E-L-R-O-D. Elrod, The Miracle Morning. So we always, it's always good to get book recommendations from the top people that help them get to the top, you know, because there's so many books out there. It's always hard to tell what to, what to choose. Oh, and yeah. And I read all the time. I really think that's a huge thing, especially as a new agent, when you have a little more time on your hands, just read. I mean, you would pay thousands of dollars to go to seminars to be able to absorb everything that these people know. And then you pay $10 to get a book and to be able to learn from them. It really is just such a good investment. Well, then you also, you also do a lot of education at the real estate board, right? I mean, you've been in my classes, so I know that I that's take a lot of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, honestly, no matter what level you're at, you should stay in the classes because even though I sit there sometimes like, okay, I know, I know, I know, there is something I learn and it also gives me an opportunity to share what I do topic right. and learn from people to see how they react to it. Like, do they think that's a good idea too? Because that's what I've been doing for two years and um, it's been really, really helpful. 
We have a question here from Joe Sonona down in Long Beach. Shout out. Uh, what do you look for in a new agent to your team and how do you keep your existing agents motivated? Um, sure. So uh, my new, I actually don't take on brand new agents. Uh, we just, we did just actually- a new do, agent to your team. A new agent to the team. If okay. It, so somebody yeah. who is driven um, full-time um, and is really willing to- and uh, really good at follow-up. Um, so I also look to make sure that they are um, a little bit tidy on time. Those are things that are important. Um, I actually do get the personality test to them too. Um, and uh, just check to see if I think that they'd be a good fit for us. Um, and then to stay motivated, we actually... Um, have biweekly meetings and uh, they're about an hour too long. And uh, my coach uh, today, actually, we're having our uh, meeting at 1030. Okay. Make sure we had, you you're fine. And our um, we're going to have a conference call with my coach uh, just to do a kickoff to the year. Because uh, we actually have never prospected like really none of us um we've had a really successful year but uh, i think that we could be better if we need some calls um but that's kind of where we're at now but it, to stay motivated i mean i meet with them once a week personally or we have the group meetings um that really helps a lot and just touching base making sure that they know i'm there for them that's really big too well and i think being a leader of a team it's pretty much like working with your clients, like they have to know that you care, that you're there for them, that, you know, you're willing to provide guidance when needed and hiring the right person to begin with, I think is, is what you do doing the personality test, making sure that they're a good fit for the team rather than some people just want to build a team with anybody that'll fog a mirror. Yeah. Doesn't work. Right. And I think that's why you're, you're doing so well. It's like you really hire the right people to begin with. And then some of that other stuff takes care of itself, right? Mm -hmm, right. So, and Cole, I want to make sure you get off to work on time so you can start your meeting. But <clears throat> as far as volunteering and giving back, because I, I know now in the last year, you've come onto the scene on, you know, NISAR and NAR and YPN and all that good stuff. You know, what prompted you to get more involved there? Was it, you know, like you said, relationship building colleagues in the industry outside your area or? You know, what point um, did you say, okay, it's time for me to get involved? Yeah. Uh, well, I was actually asked to be on the, uh, be chair of the Young Professionals Network of the Greater Capital Association of Realtors. And from there, I met a lot of people and I realized how big of an impact that organization has. And then on a state level and a national level, what they do for us as realtors. And it's really important to be involved I mean, I learned so much from those organizations that I passed down to my agents and hopefully they passed down to their colleagues that are in different firms um, because it's really hard to get communication across because we're really busy. So it's, it's tough for us to check those emails and actually read them or watch the videos that come on from NAR and ISR or GCAR, uh, but they are really important and crucial. And so I like to be there in person. It forces me to learn and to pass it along. Uh, but also, I'm at the point in my life and my career that I really want to give back, um, not just financially, but I want to be able to help get connections. And so I actually was uh, just taken onto the board for Make-A-Wish of Northeast New York, and it's been oh, life-changing. Um, it's a, a really empowering, heartwarming organization, and it just feels great to have those connections. And the people that I've met have been really incredible. Um, and the lives that we've changed just with one wish is just unbelievable. Um, so that's my big uh, support right there. And also Ronald McDonald House for the Young Professionals Network. Uh, we do a lot with them in fundraise too. And they're an amazing organization as well. So it makes me feel, uh, and it's great to give back to a community that gives so much to me. Well, and I think it's a, you know, a big key to your success is giving back and, and caring. Cause I've been at the Ronald McDonald house with you in Albany. And, you know, like if you haven't, you should be volunteering, do something you're passionate about giving back somewhere 
that needs your help because in real estate, we have to show people that we care. I think it's one of the the most caring industries out there because we really do care. We're, we're not just we about really the do. sale. Yeah. You know, when, when you see in times of tragedy with the hurricanes and the, and the, you know, the realtor relief fund and that kind of stuff, it's life changing. So even if you're, you're a new agent and you feel like you don't have the money to donate to these causes, you always have the time, especially when you're a new agent, you know, and, and it's amazing. The, I always say I get more, I get more out of it than what I put in. Right. Without question. And I know you do too. Uh, in closing, is there any advice that you would give? This is how we always close it out to the young Judith to first mm-hmm. starting in the industry or, or just a new agent starting in the industry, given the experience, the expertise, the knowledge that you have gained over these years, you know, what kind of just key advice would you give? Um, to just keep going it will get better and it will get easier. You just have to work really hard at it. Uh, Let your significant other know if you have one that it's going to get better or your family. Uh, You're going to have to dedicate a lot of time. You're going to have to miss a couple of parties or be really late. Swing by and say hi, because your customers have to come first. Um, And you just have to just keep going and don't take another job. Just, just go. (laughs) You're going to be great. I promise. Um, And also, um, I think it's really important to just learn as much as you can. Uh, Find an agent who's really busy. Um, You maybe even somebody like I was in that first June that I was slammed with business and offer to help with a home inspection or to show houses for that agent and then call them and follow up and say, this is how the inspection went. And listen to the questions I ask you. Well, did you see anything that an FHA appraiser would flag? Do we need to put up railings? Do we need to paint before the appraiser comes? Is there an oil tank buried somewhere that we have to get removed? Um, You know, also meet with mortgage officers and really like meet with every bank you can find and get to know their products and what before and how it will benefit your customers. Because at open houses, you should have cards or contact information at the ready to be able to provide to that buyer to get pre-approved with somebody you trust and know that they're going to yeah, that build trust instantly. So that's what I would do. Great advice, Judy. Thank you so much. And you're again, if, you, if you're tuning in for the first time, if you want to subscribe to our uh, talk show here, just type Millenni Who in the comments below. If you like, know, or trust somebody enough where you want to share some of this knowledge that judy has bequeathed upon you today you can tag them in the comments you can share this broadcast and again judy thank you so much we wish nothing but continued success at gabler Thanks, realty Jane. is it you too gabler, gabler realty gabler. Right? yeah okay yeah, good job i said gabler and you got mad at me before so <laughs> no i don't care i just want to make sure you're broadcasting <laughs> it right <laughs> If you're buying or selling me, you can call me Gabler. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thanks so much again. And and be safe out there if you're in the Northeast experiencing this this bombo genesis, we call it. Yeah. Uh, Be safe out there. And and thanks again, Judy. Thank you, Jamie. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye.